Joe Pass couldn't read sheet music. Wes Montgomery didn't know any music theory. Guthrie Govan never practiced with a metronome. John Abercrombie never transcribed a solo. Barry Harris never practiced the modes. <laughs> So if I want to be better than Joe Pass, Wes Montgomery, Guthrie Govan, John Abercrombie and Barry Harris, then I shouldn't read sheet music, never learn any theory, never use a metronome, not transcribe any solos and never practice the modes. And 99% of the time I hear those statements used to either make someone sound like a magic talent or as an excuse for not practicing something that requires actual work. Now, making artists magic is fine if you want to, but thinking like that also means that you're sort of giving up on learning to play like them, or that you think that you're magic yourself. Either way, it doesn't strike me as a fantastic strategy. The same goes with using this as an excuse. If Wes Montgomery can't read music, then I don't have to. But keep in mind that you are not Wes, or Joe Pass for that matter. And Joe Pass not being able to read music does not mean that he was sitting down, looking at YouTube and commenting, got taps. He learned things by ear, which is something he trained his whole life. It's not really about Wes or Joe Pass. It's about what you need to learn and what helps you the most. The argument that I'm going to make that you can really benefit from learning to read music is probably different from what you normally hear, but I also think that it's actually a lot more powerful. My introduction to guitar was classical guitar lessons, so everything was reading music for the first four to five years. But there was actually one aspect of it that I wasn't taught, and that was really a pity. At the same time, I was just reading all the music that I was playing, so it was never something that I felt like I had to work on, because that was just how you play guitar. Reading is often taught as a very mechanical process, and the problem that guitar players usually have is that you can't just point at a note in the sheet music and then say, that is this note on the guitar, similar to what you can do on a piano. On a guitar, you can play the same C in many places. And then you get the guitar and you go, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. <laughs> and I just, it just like, I, I just wow. like, just like to get it tight. But maybe the focus for learning how to read could be different. Maybe it should not be as much about how you play it, but how it sounds. Reading music then becomes a part of ear training, which will also help you with a lot of other things in your playing. The way you do that is by learning to hear music based on the key that it's in, which you might discover is a lot easier than you think, mainly because you probably already hear music in that way. Let me quickly show you what I mean and then also translate that to the guitar. Let's say that you're in the key of C, so you hear this root. You hear this as the root. And that's the note that we're going to hold on to and use to hear all the other notes in there. If you know it's in C major, probably you can hear the scale as well, so... Or maybe the triad, so the major triad. And we're just using the C here to really hear where all the other notes are. And that's something that's really, really easy to hold on to and really strong. So now that I'm editing the video, then I'm realizing that I actually don't explain why I'm singing along with what I'm playing. So really this is about side singing. It's about hearing the tonality and then being able to sing the different notes. And you use that reading of sheet music and singing is actually a great exercise for that. I'm not really gonna explain that in too much detail because I'm not an ear training teacher. What I really wanna talk about here is more that it's important that when you're reading, it's not just a mechanical process. It's really about connecting all the different skills that you use. It's the same as with all other music. So you use your ears and you train your ears to be a part of the reading process. And you actually also, as you'll see later in the video, use uh, theory and your knowledge of the key and the scale to help you read more efficiently. And I think that's really the important thing. It's not just sort of this random process of trying to move one thing from a piece of paper to a place on the guitar. It's really about hearing and reading music. And it is a process. It's something that opens up gradually. If you want to get started with side singing and thinking like this about keys, then check out my video on uh, apps because there's a free app called Functional Ear Trainer that really teaches this very well. And you can get that both on iOS and Android, and that's definitely worthwhile. I'll link to that video in the description. Now, obviously, this is something that you probably already kind of know how to do and something that you want to further train and develop. But if you can read in a key like this, then playing something of some sheet music becomes a lot easier because it's just about knowing the scale and being able to hear what's on the page. And that means that you can look at something like this and then you hear this. And this is a really efficient way to internalize and learn music. Of course, when you do this, 
then you're just adding your ears into the mix. And it doesn't mean that if you work on this for half an hour, it's a magic pill and you can hear everything. It sort of gradually opens up. And it doesn't mean that, for instance, I can just side sing bebop solos in tempo 250. But it does really help that you know what the notes are sounding like. And also if there are passages where you only hear some of the notes. And this is a very efficient way to learn and internalize music. And the way music notation is made actually is a much bigger help than you might think. And I think that's really overlooked when it comes to music notation. Sometimes we don't use that and that makes it a huge mess. A good example of this would be the Omnibook, so the Charlie Parker Omnibook, where everything is written out in C with accidentals. And that's probably one of the things that annoys me the most in any jazz education book. If this concept is completely new to you and you want to experience how it actually works, maybe try to take a song that you already know and read that in a key that you also know. There is another equally important thing to learn that is maybe a little bit style dependent, but which also make things a lot easier, not only with reading, but also just with music in general. First, I think we need to discuss something else though. I talked about this in a video a few years ago, and for some reason, people think that sight reading is the same as being able to read music, which it really isn't. And I think it's useful to make a distinction between the two. Just like anything else that you have to play, you need to practice to play it. If you need to learn 40 pop pieces for a gig, or if you need to learn the originals in a band, then you practice those songs. And sometimes you get the material as an audio recording, and sometimes it's written out. But on a side note, it is never written out in tabs. Never. The goal is the same. You need to end up playing it, nailing it on the gig, and it means practicing what is on the page to get it to the point where you can easily play it and get it to sound right. And it really is a different process. If you're working on reading music and trying to turn that into a solid performance with good phrasing and timing, then you're paying attention to a lot more details and trying to fix things so that it sounds as well as you can get it to sound. Instead of trying to just side read it, which is really just starting at the beginning and then trying to survive without crashing, getting to the end without too many wrong notes. Approaching it like this is the same as trying to learn to solo over changes by improvising with iReal and then just letting the app choose random songs without learning any songs. It's very superficial. Another useful connection when it comes to reading is that you want to learn to see the notes in a melody as groups of notes rather than reading everything one note at a time. I guess it's really about being able to recognize patterns in a written out piece of music, but that's also really how you probably think about the lines that you improvise or how you analyze a solo that you transcribe. This is just like reading a text. It's much more efficient to read words compared to trying to spell everything. I think it's pretty obvious. And the better you get at recognizing the building blocks in the music when you read, the easier it's going to get. From a technical point of view, it also fits together very well with reading music in a key where you're able to play common building blocks. So if you're practicing diatonic seventh chords and diatonic triads, then that's going to make it a lot easier to play melodies in that key that use those building blocks. What musical words you want to be able to recognize is of course style dependent. But for Bob inspired jazz, then the diatonic seventh chords, the diatonic triads and their inversions, chromatic enclosures and octave displays the pedios are very useful to know. For other styles, you of course have other words. I don't care if you want to learn to read, just to be completely honest. Spend a lot of time practicing reading. Reading? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just look at the pictures. <laughs> Lots of people have relied on using their ear instead of reading sheet music, as I was talking about in the beginning of the video. In fact, I don't really consider myself that great at reading music because it's not something that I do most of the time, but that doesn't mean that I can't read, of course. People always go to the extremes with this. You can either side read anything or you don't know where the middle C is. There's nothing in between. I remember that there is a Holsworth clinic on YouTube somewhere where you can see that he gets really annoyed that people think that he's completely clueless with reading, which of course he isn't. He's just not a great sight reader. But do keep in mind that saying that it's useless to learn to read and suggest that tabs and diagrams are as useful 
is in my opinion not true. You already saw how the notation ties in with how we hear and play music and tabs and diagrams can just never do that. And I'm sure that you agree that these skills are essential to playing music and you can use reading as a way of improving them if you approach it in the right way. Let me know what you think in the comments. I would not put reading at the top of the list or consider it one of the most important things that you want to work on if you want to learn jazz. It is useful also for communicating with other musicians and analyzing what is going on in the music, but learning solos by ear and playing jazz is much more important. But of course, spending a few minutes a day singing from sheet music and training your ability to hear a tonality is definitely not a waste of time and maybe one of the most useful things that you could do if you want to improve your ears. Just learn from the masters. It's both the worst and the best advice that you'll get online. Learning solos by ear is a great way to develop your ear, your phrasing and your vocabulary. But if you don't get any suggestions of places to start and solos to check out, then it can be almost impossible. Now, if you've never learned to play a solo by ear and played along with the album, then you're definitely missing out. It's a lot of fun and it's a really great feeling to really nail it. And it really doesn't have to be that difficult. So if you want some suggestions for easy but great solos to start with from Wes, Kenny Burrell and Josh Benson, then check out this video.